Well, hi. I'm Robert Knoll, and you're at the Guitar Zone. Well, this is a part two chord scale. The first part, we dealt with the open chords in the C scale. Now we're dealing with some bar chords. So first, I'd like you to see the type two bar chords, okay? So we have a C chord, and you should know this as a bar chord, a four note bar chord. And you should see your intervals, right? And if you do, you should see frame one, five, root, third, right? And if we flat that third, we get minor. So your first chord of the chord scale is C, right? Then we're going to the two chord, which is D minor. I could play that as a four note or a five note chord. So this is definitely a, a four note chord. You don't want to hit the top note, that would be a six. So we got two, our three chord, as you should know, is minor and it's E minor. Our four chord is major. Our five chord is major or dominant, okay, can be a seven. Our six chord minor, the relative minor, is A minor. And then we've got that half diminished chord or diminished chord. We want to go to, and then we're back to C major seven. And then we could continue to a, a two chord minor, and then maybe a, well, kind of tough on that three chord minor up there, but you might be able to get it. I could also start down here on our, remember our B diminished, half diminished seven? So I have that chord there. That could be my seven chord, of course, the seventh degree of the C scale, seven, one. So it's important in this C major seven chord to see you have a root, you have your fifth, you must see your major seven. This is important. Your second finger is playing the major seven, right? And we have a, a major third, and G would be another perfect fifth. Okay, so now I'm harmonizing. I've gone from the the standard, just plain old C chord to making that a major seven. So I've added that seven in there, and that gives it the flavor of the major seven. It harmonizes with the seven. When I go to D minor, I can drop off that fourth finger and that gives me a dominant seven. So I've got a D minor seven. I could also add a seven on the top. You should know that chord. My three chord minor is E minor. I could be E minor seven. Now my four chord, which would be F usually, I can make that a, a major seven. Hear how nice that sounds? We went and we changed the major seven with the, the root F, we made, we flatted it and we get the major seven. Okay? So now I'm at uh, the five chord and that's G seven. I went from G to G seven. And then I'm to the relative minor, which is A minor, but I'm gonna take off the fourth finger and make that an A minor seven. And I've got an added seven I could use. Six chord, now that seven chord, that B half diminished. Half diminished seven. And now I'm back to C major seven. And I could probably squeeze in a D minor seven, maybe an E minor seven, and then I would be back. If I came backwards, which it's always good to play these backwards, right? Your E minor seven, your D minor seven, your C major seven, your B half diminished seven, your A minor seven, your G seven, your F major seven, your E minor seven, your D minor seven, your C major seven, and then I would go down to a B half diminished seven. And then I could actually go down and 
use my open uh, relative minor, which would be A minor 7 or A minor. So you see what I've done with form type 2 chords. I've taken the form that lies for each chord. In this case, for the C major 7, I would see my form 5 scale and arpeggio happening here. And the same thing with the D minor, I see a minor scale form too. The same thing with E minor. The F major 7, I see my form 5 major, my dominant, my dominant for the 5 chord, G7, now my A minor 7, for my relative minor, A minor, right? And then when we get to the, the B half diminished, at some point you're going to learn your diminished scales. And you're going to realize that we've got diminished scales that we're going to have to learn and diminished arpeggios. So, I hope that helps you start to get into your, your type 2 chords. Now, these chords could also be, instead of a major 7, I could use a major 9. And I could use a 9 for, for the D minor, the E minor, the F major 9. So I could also bring in another harmony, which would be bringing in the 9s. Some chords I can use a 7 and a 9, major 7 or a minor 7, depending. These are things we'll explore more in the future. So family of chords for majors, the family of chords for minors. This is what we're starting to explore. I'd like to also go to the type 1 C major chord scale. And that would be by going to our C major 7 on the 8th position. You've got your C, your 3rd finger is playing the major 7. This is from your your form 2 major scale. So you get your major 7, 1st finger, 3rd finger, major 7. Right underneath the major 7 is your major 3rd. 1, 2, 3. So you get your 4th finger on the major 3rd, and your 2nd finger plays the perfect 5th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This chord form is so important because it leads you to see other chord forms, major 9s and 6s. But you really need to see, I think it's really helpful to really have this chord very well to see to know the intervals to play it well and it's a movable chord form just like all the other chord forms we've done so far I can move this up to uh, you know a major 7 a flat major 7 G major 7 but generally it's just like your your C major 7 type 2 form this is a very very mellow sounding chord your C chord open position when you take off your first finger, there's your major seven. You could even add the fifth in the bottom. It gives you that great big wonderful major seven. In this major seven, you could add the fifth in the bottom. Just like the D minor seven, the E minor seven, the F major seven, the G seven, the A minor seven. Well, and but not the B. Not the B half to manage. But all those chords, I was able to see that I could add the fifth in the bottom. So, in a way, I've altered the two type two chords because I'm able to put that fifth in the bottom, which really makes it sound big and fat, really kind of even warmer even, okay? Can't do that with type one chords because the root is the lowest note. But I want you to start examining your chords. So what would my next chord be? Well, I'm going to play my chord in this fashion, D minor 7, because this chord here had the major 7, the 3rd, and the 5th. So this kind of follows suit when I play it this way, this nice sliding D minor 7, because I, I now have the D, the root, I have the minor 7, the minor 3rd, and the 5th in the same order 
as I had a root, this time a major seven, major third fifth. But here it's minor. This is my two chord minor. My E minor is my three chord minor. Now I go to my F major seven. Ah, once again, same order. One, this time a major seven, major third fifth. Okay, what if I do my, if I go to my five chord, what if I go to my G now and I do it maybe this way? I might do it first finger on the G. I've got my second finger on the dominant seven to keep it in order. And then the major third and the fifth. Now I could do that with my thumb also. I like doing it both ways. You should learn it both ways. Thumb, first finger, second finger, first finger. Then we're to A minor seven. Well, A minor seven, the sixth chord, relative minor of C, I've got in that same order. Once again, root, minor seven this time, minor third, perfect fifth. And then we get to a B half diminished. It's going to be really hard up there. Maybe I can pull it. Ah, I don't know. My fingers are too fat. But, okay. So what we did here is we did our C, Do, our one, two, three, four, five, six, and then my seven I could do. I'd have to maybe go down here and do a, a, a diminished chord or a half diminished chord. B. I would have my second finger on B. I'd have the uh, the flatted minor seven, the uh, minor third, which is the diminished third, and then I have a flat five on the top. Okay, so I have that flat five tritone. It's a lovely chord. Two, one, three, one. And then that brings me back to C. So watch. I'm going to play backwards. There's my seven chord. Seven chord half diminished or diminished. Now I'm going to my relative minor, my A minor seven. Okay. So I'm going one, seven, six, the relative minor, minor six chord. Then my G seven. Okay, so that's my dominant. I'm using, I can use either fingering, it's fine. I could even use a G7 old fashioned bar chord way, but it kind of sounds stocky with the fifth. I like the warmer sound. And then we're going to F major seven. Or it could be an F chord. If I wanted it to be boring and just plain old F. And then E minor, which is my minor third. And then my minor second, I'd probably have to go way back up here. So I can do my, my chord scale backwards and forwards. And when I go all the way forwards to that diminish, I can come back. And then I can keep going. And then you want to practice, you know, coming back up. And then continue going up. Now we could embellish these chords like we did before with nines. And uh, sometimes we can add a, a six, a nine. Depends on the family. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that in the future. I want you to get familiar with the chords I've given you today. They're so important. So, you've got two C major sevens, right? Or three with the open. I want you to know the D minor, the D minor, the D minor sevens, the E minor, the E minor seven, your F major seven, and then your G sevens. Your A minor sevens, or your A minor, minor seven, okay, and 
and now your B diminished, half diminished. One, three, two, four. And then you're back to C major seven. By the way, this is another nice root, major third, perfect fifth, major seven. So now we can start with other voicings. We'll go over those later, but it's important you see this is a very nice form. Play my C major seven like this, and my maybe my my F major seven, my four chord. So if I want to start using the major scale, we might want to start playing around, making an adventure uh, and discoveries with writing little songs or progressions, but sticking to the major seven or the major chord scale. Now I've done this all in the key of C, but you've got to be able to do it in all keys. That means B flat, A major, G major, F major, E major, you need to be able to play chord scales in any of the keys. This is where you really start to get the knowledge of your scales. You need to know the intervals. You need to see the, your note names, of course, but you also need to see the intervals and see where they are in the chord pattern. This is really important so that you can develop and add to chords and improvise with chords. When another musician's playing a certain F major, well, maybe you add the 7, or maybe you add the 9. The C, if someone's playing a stock C chord, well, maybe maybe you playing a major 7 might be appropriate, or a major 9, or a major 6. So using the family of chords, this is important. Key word, family of chords. Okay? You have a major family, a minor family, a dominant family. You have a diminished family and an augmented family, and we're going to go through these in the future. We're in the key of C. I wanted you to see your open C scale as we did in the uh, first part one of chord scale, and now we've gone to the type two chord scale and also the type one chord scale. Now, I could have did all of those chords. I could have done them as instead of a major seven, a stock C chord, just like this stock C chord. And I could have done a stock D minor bar chord, just like this two minor. And then my three minor, my E minor, I could have used top chords. My F could be just like an F. My G, a G, a G bar chord, an A minor, stock A minor, but then I've always got to do the, the diminished, okay? We've got to do that as a half diminished. And so in that way, sometimes the stock chords are what you want to play. A lot of rock and roll. But when we start getting into jazz and other flavors of other styles, blues, then it becomes nice to not have just that pure stock rudimentary C chord or G chord or F chord. We want to be able to add the major sevens if we need to, the dominant sevens or the minor sevens, the minor six, the major nine, the minor nine. Okay. What about sus chords? Well, we'll look at those in another lesson coming up. We're learning to analyze our chords and we're learning to look at major chord scales. So coming soon, we're going to be doing your minor chord scale. And we're going to look at dominant chord scales. And we're going to look at how to use augmented and diminished. So we've got a lot of basics to learn with chords. Why chords work in a song. So if I'm going to play a song in the key of C, I have to follow the rules of the major scale to stay in the key of C. Do we always have to follow the rules? No. 
but it might sound really odd. It might sound wrong. So when you stick to a chord scale, and when you're coming up with a progression or working, you uh, are pretty much going to know that most of these, these chords are going to sound good. You can work with them all. These seven chords work. If you do something outside it, well, you know, maybe you're taking a chance, or maybe it could be a really good change, a modulation to another key, or going from ma major to minor or minor to major. We can mix up chord scales and songs. You know, so there's, we can have rules and we can throw out rules, okay? But understanding major chord scales and hearing them, just like you hear when you play your major scales and your arpeggios, major arpeggios, you hear a chord scale. And let's just say there's a song that you want to learn. And it happens to be in the key of C. Well, you're going to make a determination whether... First, whether it's major or minor. Do I hear a minor scale or do I hear a major scale or some other scale? If it's major, then you're going to go, wow, well, chances are that most of the chords in this song are going to be one of these seven chords in the major chord scale. Now, it may be that there's only two chords. Maybe it's just a C major seven and a D minor seven, a one, two minor. Maybe it's a song that has a C major 7 and E minor, and that's it. But maybe it has three chords. Maybe the song has a chorus, and then the, the, uh, the, verse, the verses are different. Maybe it's an E minor 7 and a 4 chord, your F major 7. Maybe somewhere in there the, the G7, the dominant, comes in. And you can see hear that dominant power of dominant chord leading to one chord. G7, one chord. Also, be able to mix these chords up from type ones and twos. They're interchangeable. And we're going to talk about more about interchanging different intervals and in chords. And then with the chord scales, when you start practicing, practice different rhythms. And then maybe you'll start to just fool around, take the adventures, and, and write progressions that you come up with that you think sound good. And this way, you're starting to learn, do the ear training, where you're able to start learning and hearing what the one to the three minor chord sounds like, one to the five, one to the relative minor, one to the diminished, or diminished to five, or five to... Uh, major four or minor two. So now you start to begin to talk like a musician, the language. We're talking in chord scale. What is the minor two in the key of uh, A major? It would be B minor. What would the minor three chord be? Well, one, two, three. It'd be C sharp minor, right? D would be the four, E the five. So you need to start putting this together. It takes time. You don't get it in one week. But you've got to spend time examining your chords, analyzing them, and going, okay, chord scales are important. And you need to start spending the time of studying them and hearing them and working with them. When you know those chord scales are happening and you've got a song and you're jamming off major seven... And then the chord goes to the E minor, the three chord. I might play my riffs built off of that chord. And then when it goes to the, uh, the four chord. I'm playing off the scale. The arpeggio, the relative minor. That was the diminish, and then maybe I go to the the five chord G. You know? 
So playing your chord scales and being able to play the chord, type one, type two, or whatever, and being able to play an arpeggio on each one of those chords and a scale, now you're starting to put it together. <laughs> All right. Well, this was kind of a long lesson here today. Uh, there may be a part three coming, and then we're also going to be going to uh, work with the minor. Uh, we're going to work with the minor chord scale that's going to be coming in a couple parts, okay? But remember, we got to do things in all keys. And be patient, but be diligent. Keep working on it. Don't give up on it. You'll get it, and you'll be actually really glad you learned about chord scales. And that you can anal you know your chords. You know what intervals are in your chords. You know the note names, Big Alp. And you know the scale that goes with it, the arpeggio. And you know the intervals. How great. Then you know the language of music. You're learning it. You can go anywhere with it. Any style of music, you can heighten and be great by having an understanding of music, music theory, guitar theory, unlocking the geography of the neck, but in not only notes, but intervals and keys. What key are we in? We'll do a lesson on the circle of fifths. This could help you. I think I've done enough. I could keep going on, but let's leave it for another part. I think this is a good uh, lesson to digest. You can always, and you should, go back to part one of the open C major, because I do a lot of discussion there, and I kind of write a little song. You could also take that little song I wrote, or that we wrote together in uh, part one, and you could bring that to this part where we brought it to type two chords or type one chords and play the same progression. All right. Well, practice. Hang in there. Have fun with it. And if you ever get down, tired, you know, take a break. Relax your hands. Sometimes a little bit of humor goes a long ways. And we'll talk about that, too, in one of my lectures coming up. Uh, the power of humor. It, it's good. <laughs>